Hi, today I'm going over issues you may encounter owning the BMW 335i. I'll only cover the model year of 2007 to 2010, since those years are N54. What's said will most likely apply to other BMW models such as the 135, the 535, the Z4, the 1M, and I believe uh, one of the X series also have the N54 in them also. Um, out of the box, this car has like a lot of performance. We're talking about 300 horsepower, 300 pound-feet of torque, making this an excellent daily driver and base tuning platform. With a tune or piggyback and supporting mods, you can increase those figures to like high 400s. Go even further and add upgraded turbos, a fuel system upgrade, and you can be in an 800 horsepower club. And all this without even touching the internals. What other engine do you think has these capabilities of not even touching internals and making so much horsepower? Like, Really, which one? Um, just like many of the non-M cars, this car has suffered greatly from depreciation. Um, brand new, they were mid 30 to 40k, depending on the options. And as of early 2017, you can find them averaging mid 5k to 10 thousand dollars, probably 10 thousand dollars. Um, depending on the condition. Just like many of the non-M cars, it has suffered greatly from depreciation. Brand new, they were mid thirty to forty thousand dollar cars, depending on the options. As of early twenty seventeen, you can find them averaging um five to ten thousand dollars, depending on the condition and what options they have, and if they're even running straight with a uh, no um was it service engine soon light on or whatever. The E ninety three thirty five has not only been hit at its price, but it has also been hit early on when it first released with um, early equipment issues. The most public would be the high pressure fuel pump, which tends to go sporadically. Like you drive it one day and the next day all of a sudden, bam, your car won't start again. You know what? The high pressure fuel pump. An extended recall period was placed on it for 10 years or 120,000 miles, whichever comes first. Once 2017 ends, this warranty will become void to everyone. Since my car is a January build, I have been disqualified from the recall program already. I personally only needed it changed once, even though it has been changed twice. Once on the recall, and the recall version fell like, I think like a year and a half, two years after, and they replaced that one also um, within that warranty period, and I'm like so happy, because <laughs> for me to do it myself, I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with it, and I believe it's like, brand, the part, the high pressure fuel pump brand new would be like $420 plus some like labor if you, well labor would be free for yourself, it's just your time. The N54 also utilizes direct injection, meaning it places the fuel injectors literally into the combustion chamber. This helps give you great um, miles per gallon, allows you to tune your car more efficiently. Um, it has a lot of other pluses, but I'm not really going to get into it. The major oversight is that fuel doesn't flow the intake ports and valve, which cause build up in your, build up in your engine. This means that when you put in um, gasoline that says clean um, intake, help keep your engine clean and all that stuff, it does nothing for the N54 since the fuel does not go travel through the intake track like traditional um, cars. Um, so after a while, your intake ports will become dirty and after a while you start to get stumbled, um, idle, and rough idle. And then you will also have, um, what is it? You actually lose some horsepower, also. So, the reason why you can't beat that other car is because you ain't keep your <laughs> intakes clean. So, also, yeah, C foam won't work in there, also. So, the only way to really combat this is to uh, every couple oil change or so, you go ahead and have your intakes cleaned. And you'd be surprised how quickly they get dirty. You could also um, get a port injection kit, which I find will be the most cost-efficient um, matter me method because if you keep getting your port um, clean, or should I say water blasted every couple of oil changes or so, it will cost you about like $300 or you have to go ahead and buy um, material, media blast every to refill it. So it's like you're hemorrhaging money out your pocket just for that. So you might as well just upgrade to a port injection kit that sprays fuel into your intake ports and it overcomes a fuel ceiling if you want big power down the road. So it's a win-win, you can get clean intakes and be able to sport a lot of horsepower. Wow, Stewie, you look like a new man. Well, will you look at me? I have the power! <laughs> 
Speaking of injectors, depending on if the car is using the old index injectors, they will leak on you. So like such years of 2007 and mid-2008, they have like an old index number. I can't remember what number they are. I'll put them in the description um, below. Um, so what will happen is after a while, your injectors will just start to leak. Even while, when pretty much when the car is not started, it just start leaking. And you could park your car inside of your um, garage or something like that and it will just like permeate throughout your whole house. And if you were outside, you could sit there and smell gasoline pretty much coming from your car. So people come to you like, yo, what's happened to your car? Like somebody's dumped gasoline on it? Is that like gonna go blow up or something like that? So the most cost effective way is to go find a crash. 235 or one of those models with an MT4 in it and take their <laughs> injectors that have like a higher index or you could go ahead and buy all six brand new for like a little bit over a grand for a whole kit. Everyone knows that BMWs are notorious for having their cooling systems as a weak one. It's not that the components don't do their job well, it's just that you need to monitor the cooling system a little bit closer. In this case, it's the water pump, the cooling reservoir, and the various lines that connect everything together. The water pump is, is uh, electronic and has a plastic impeller. So what usually occurs is that that impeller wheel will break and cease to move cooling around your engine. When this occurs, you will see a yellow cooling warning and then a red one immediately after. Immediately, turn off your car and get it towed home or wherever you get your car um, repaired. You can't limp an N54 home or you'll be replacing your motor, plain and simple. The coolant reservoir and line fittings are made from a hard plastic. With all the heat cycling in the engine bay, those lines eventually crack or disintegrate. If you touch them wrong or any of that sort, they just, yeah. When they get up in mileage, those things will break. And at about every 80,000 miles or so, you should go ahead and like, might as well just overhaul the entire cooling system. The turbos are the backbone of the 335i. And these two turbos are TDO3s uh, from MHI. And they are ridiculously small. Like, small, small. Um, in their small size, they deliver uh, quick acceleration at 8 PSI stock. With a tune, you could boost them to about 18 PS PSI. So that's about their maximum right there until you pretty much cause them more harm than good <laughs> you know what i mean so even in stock form you may even start to experience the dreaded wastegate rattle this is one of the most um pretty much one of the top complaints about 335 after a while is their turbos and the wastegate rattle so wastegate rattle consists of the wastegates having play and rattle against its housing it like they go like this, and like, dee -dee 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 -dee, like hand clappers against it while it's idling. So once you hit boost on them, then they close back up, and then that creates boost, and then when you let off, it opens back up. So that's how the boost, um, the waste gates work on the 335. So, um, so they have like temporary fixes to fix this wastegate rattle. So this will be constant so this will constitute of like um adjusting the wastegate arms until it's not that loose anymore. Or you could do it via tune or payback options. But neither of them is very permanent but just a band-aid fix. You not only have to worry about rattles but when the turbos have finally given up they will smoke like high hell. It will look like a smoke screen from a James Bond's movie. Once this has occurred, your only option is to replace them or get an upgrade. So, it's not really a death sentence because since you upgrade, you get a whole lot more power. But, in the meantime, when they're smoking, it's quite embarrassing to sit at a stoplight and have your car spewing smoke and rattling like a rattlesnake. It's just like, really? <laughs> so, um, all other issues are considered maintenance items. That would be the, let me see. Well, oil changes. Well, you pretty much gotta keep up on the oil changes, and um, you also have to consider the was it uh, oil pressure? Not oil pressure. Oil filter housing. The gasket will leak, and your valve cover will leak, 
and your transmission pan gasket will leak and just to do that job you have to pretty much support your whole engine and try to subframe just to change a $20 gasket so it's not even the part that's expensive it's the labor just to do it um let me see yeah everything else is just pretty much maintenance those are the main things that will um that's the main things you'll encounter if you ever decide to get a 235 um when everything is running as it should it's like the most excellent experience of driving a car it's just so quick and fun but when anything is out of whack, you just want to burn it and chuck it in a lake. And you pretty much waiting for it to finish burn before even chucking it in a lake. All in all, you must keep up with the maintenance of this car. If not, it will bleed your pockets dry. So remember, this is like a $50,000, $40,000 car, but it is now down into a five dollars to $10,000 range. So just because it's that cheap, please make sure to remember that you have to keep up the maintenance on it as if it was a what forty fifty thousand dollar car so overall that's the main thing i want to get at so if you like this video like it um comment like to hear comments um and also subscribe for new content as i let them out all right thanks a lot